Hey everyone, Cynix here, and it is a new year, which means it's time to look back at all of the art I made over this previous year. So obviously I don't post much stuff on Instagram or anything, uh, but nonetheless, I have tons of little scraps and little sketches and little things to share. And this is really the one video every year where you get to see all of the stuff I've created. Unless, of course, you're a Twitch regular because most of these little scraps of nonsense were created on Twitch. But first, before we jump into that, there is a little bit of other stuff I like to do in my yearly recap videos. Um, and I think it's time to do a quick state of the art world address. So let me just say, I think the state of the art world is strong. I see collective growth among really the whole community and new ideas being formed, new concepts being applied, and overall just a heightened awareness for principles of design theory among all skill levels of artists. I personally feel like we've seen such an expansion into basic understandings of how color and light work um, that the just average of all artists across the board has really just gone up exponentially over the years. And it's really just interesting to watch how trends emerge and what becomes more popular and what doesn't and everything like that. I feel like uh, we're in a really good spot lately because as I've obsessed over on a lot of the times I've been asked, uh, I feel like there's a big trend in art to really focus on bounce light, uh, indirect light sources, and really playing up information in the shadows and lessening information in the light areas. And I'm a big fan of that. I think it's been a great trend and I think people are understanding color and light so much better because of things like that. You know, the compression of value ranges um, and the compression of information ranges to either be, once again, either in the light or in the shadows. Uh, it's just been really amazing to see so many people getting so good at that. Um, so hopefully that continues and in 2024, let's keep embracing the idea of doing more with less because I promise you that will be where most of your breakthroughs come from. Uh, it will create a heightened sense of the illusory aspects of art and I think that will be what lets you reach your goals and just ever increasing heights. So that's great, but obviously the art world is not all smooth sailing. Um, there are some annoyances, and some of them have luckily died out. Uh, NFTs are pretty much dead and dying. So maybe we can just do a quick little eulogy for NFTs. Creativity has kind of been forced into a symbiotic relationship with money, as it must just to exist in our world that we've established. But pretending that money has more value or importance than art has always been a very silly concept. Art doesn't need to strive to be worth money. Uh, money can strive to be worth art. Uh, but honestly, you know, the value in art is in its ability to pass on information, to help us grow as a species, you know? And I'm expanding this to all things. Obviously, stories, fables, myths, these are the ways we pass down information generation to generation. It's always been the most effective form of getting just knowledge and wisdom across to other people. Um, and it's been like that forever. And, you know, with music and visual arts joining into that, it's really something that money could never hope to rival. And I know we have to work inside the confines of money and capital, but they've always just been very opposed to each other. Success in money is about how much you can hoard to yourself, uh, but success in art has always been about how much you can spread and how far you can reach. I know that can feel a bit strange in the short term, uh, but I assure you in the long term, uh, it is the one truly powerful force. Anyway, NFTs were pretty doomed from the start, but uh, I don't know, it always takes time for people to fully understand why. So goodbye to NFTs, you know, I'm sure they'll still try to cling on and linger around, but uh, I think for the most part, yeah, they're dead, they're over. Uh, goodbye, so long. But speaking of things being doomed, generative AI is obviously the new fixation. Many people are already fighting the good fight and how unethical and unlawful the technology might be. Um, considering it's, you know, an unprecedented scale of labor theft, it's a very complicated thing to dig through. 
Um, but let's also appreciate a different aspect, uh, the clarity that generative AI might offer us and just how art and creativity relates to humanity. Just, you know, stripping away all of the obvious ethics and legal stuff. Uh, let's talk about it more on a different type of scale. I'm sure you're aware of how individual growth usually comes from confronting limitations and overcoming hurdles. Uh, that's really why most people get hooked on creativity. It's a journey into self-discovery and new observations. These journeys always start with the desire to manifest something from inside of our heads. But as we stumble and find new limitations, we also discover the power of our intuition and subconscious. And eventually we begin to find that the comfort zone of the thing that we set out to create just kind of feels hollow and a little bit boring in our new perspective on things. Well, what would happen if you never really had to encounter your personal limitations? I feel like the promise of generative AI is the promise of an infinite comfort zone, uh, one with no limitations and discomfort, just infinitely extruded from the things we already know we like. Or to be more charitable toward the AI enthusiast, uh, maybe some extrusions into the things that uh, you know we have hidden in our memories and that we've forgotten that we liked. Um, and that can be valuable, that can be nice. Uh, I won't pretend some people don't get some form of value out of, you know, kind of wallowing in those fragments of the current and past self, but we should also recognize the huge barrier that it puts between us and our confrontations with our insecurities. It's kind of like learning a skateboard trick, you know? You can fully understand the physics involved, you know, the mechanical movements, but growth of your skill will only happen in the acceptance that failure will hurt and you must go through that pain in order to develop a greater understanding of yourself and eventual overcoming of that fear. Um, and that's really where the, the you know, ability to progress comes from. In theory, you could learn to skateboard with, you know, like safety harnesses and tethers so you would never, you know, have any real risk of failure or injury. Um, and there's no doubt that the facsimile of experiencing mastery is quite fun. You know, I'm sure it would be enjoyable still. I'm sure there would be good things to get out of it. And that's what AI people keep telling me is that they're very happy with this feeling alone. I just worry that it devalues our personal growth into a purely superficial endeavor. Generative AI has the potential to relax us into a place where, you know, we have no desire to leave our comfort zones. We will see the visuals we already know we like. Uh, we will hear the music we already know we like. We will get the algorithmically driven content feed that we know we already like. We will reach new highs of spectacle and new lows of insight. The idea of growth can become a lost concept and, you know, maybe we'll just wind up eating chicken tenders for every meal until we drop dead of a heart attack while watching, I don't know, the 30th reboot of Spider-Man. Who knows, maybe that's just the way things go. There's probably millions of civilizations in the universe and we haven't met any of them, so maybe they're all full of individuals just, you know, contently consuming the latest spider glorp movie in their cultural isolation pods. No, actually, I am pretty surprisingly positive on this whole thing. I think, uh, if anything, this is just a massive societal humanity kind of trip down a little avenue. Um, and I think personally that generative AI will help us really reconnect with what, you know, matters about creativity and society as a whole. I think it's a good learning opportunity and a good chance to start to observe these things. Do I think some people will get just swept up in it? Do I think we will lose some potential great creative minds of the future? Yes, probably. Uh, it will be a little bit of setback momentarily, but I think the outcome, you know, could lead to much greater heights and greater understandings of, you know, just what we want out of life, out of a human project. What is it all about? Um, and what things can we observe about it? You know, we don't want it to just be get the things you like your whole life and then you just lie down and die. I know it sounds kind of nice at times, you know, you have a rough day and that sounds great. You know, you go through all these hurdles in life and sometimes you just want it to be, you know, easy, relaxed, with nothing much going on. 
Um, but it's, you know, it is those hurdles. It is those hardships that really make us something special, that really um, awaken us to new things and new insights. And once again, you know, just get you in touch with your subconscious and just deeper states of mind. Um, so, you know, it sounded a little grim, um, but I'm generally positive. I think it will lead to a lot of interesting new content of people, more so in reaction um, to generative AI and really just everything. You know, it's re in reaction to social media, algorithmic feeds, um, just endless content tailored just for you. Uh, I think it's all just going to be something that helps spur on a greater philosophical movement. But you know, who knows? Maybe not. Maybe this is the end. Uh, but uh, regardless, uh, you know, I won't keep rambling on this right now. I already talked about it way more than I expected to, honestly. It's probably already way into the video. But I believe in humanity, you know, as a project in the long run. So, uh, you know, I'll stay optimistic and I'll keep advocating for things that I believe in. And people can obviously advocate for the things they believe in. Um, you know, and whatever resonates, resonates, and, you know, that's fine. All we can do is make our observations and insights and uh, do the best we can, I guess. But in the meantime, uh, it's time to look back at all the stupid things I made in 2023. And don't worry, they will be quite stupid. All right, here we go. I'm invisible now, so let's get into it. Um, this year, I'll just disclaimer it a little bit. Uh, like I said, it's all pretty much Twitch stuff. Um, it's a lot of just sketches. It's a lot of answering questions, demoing little theories, um, giving people little insights into just little questions they might have and stuff like that. Um, so that's a big bulk of the inspiration for a lot of things. The other big bulk is just asking, you know, Twitch chat, like, hey, you know, what should I do? What should this thing be? Um, and getting a little bit collaborative uh, with them on stuff. So this is a pretty standard looking page, you know, you got faces, you got robotic stuff, you got a couple guns, you got all kinds of silly things. And uh, this was how I started the year, January 1st, a little, uh, just a little doodly page. Uh, nothing too special though. Um, <laughs> same goes for this. I guess this is the first painting of the year. Uh, we got our uh, broccoli head guy and we got some weird cat looking <laughs> demon. I don't know what it is. Don't ask me, that's just nothing important. This page was uh, kind of fun though, you know, a little bit of nice painterly stuff going on with the skin tones, trying to still adapt into like how much hard edge versus soft edge do I want in my painting techniques. Also just, you know, having a little bit of fun with faces and face styles, which I can't resist. You know, it's so hard to draw pretty people when all these weirdos are just so much more fun and engaging to me. But yeah, here's some here's some creatures, a lot of noses going on here, you know? Big snoz territory. Um, and oh, here we go, Edge Runner Pooh. Who, who doesn't love that guy? And Corpo Piglet, boo, boo Corpo Piglet. By the way, Mickey Mouse now officially, no, Steamboat Willie officially public domain. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm allowed to, I'm allowed to draw it now. And it's Steamboat Willie, not Mickey Mouse, um, just for, purposes. Um, so yeah, fun little drawings there. More faces. Once again, this is my comfort zone. As much as I was giving AI a hard time about pe keeping people in infinite comfort zones, uh, I do stay in my infinite comfort zone of faces, but at least I get to experience my intuitive hand and a little bit of growth in trusting my lines and my shapes as I do them. Because that's the fun of making these really weird faces. It's just kind of letting your hand carry you wherever it wants to go, and then just trying to use your fundamentals to turn it into something with form and shapes. I think this looks like two amazing art YouTube people. This looks like an Ahmed and Cynics collab going on here. Um, all right, classic times. A lot of industrial stuff at the start of the year because uh, a lot of these uh, content you'll be looking at is driven by my classes that I teach. And at the start of last year, I was teaching my uh, mech design class at Brainstorm. Very fun online classes, just a good time to hang out and do a certain topic with different people 
In fact, coming up at the end of this month is technically my first one of the year, and it's a brand new class. I'm just gonna do weapon design. No more perspective, this simple weapon design, industrial design for everyone. Uh, be sure to check that out. Uh, but anyway, we got some little quick studies. It looks like I was trying to take a pose of a photo. I think this was for a Discord challenge. I was just trying to mimic Nurjan Bekliev, but uh, I can't I can't quite nail his style as, you know, as well as he can, obviously, but it's still fun. And then we got Kyle coming for your wallet, everyone. Um, so Kyle's a jerk, but uh, we love him anyway, because look at him. Yeah. He, he looks he looks mean, he looks evil, but I kind of like him. He's just kind of fun, he's hanging out. Uh, and here's a mule, it's just something to carry weight. Once again, tons of fun industrial times right at the start of the year. I think this was a pretty solid, pretty good one. Kind of weirdly, you know, the large legs in the back and the little kind of legs in the front make it look like little arms, like someone's, you know, crawling around. Um, but I enjoy it, so hooray. This is a more standard kind of doodling page, you know, just little widgets of things, little touches of industrial stuff. And here's Gorb. Everyone knows Gorb. I don't know. <laughs> this is, um, yeah, this is, it gets a little bit uh, repetitive with some of these strokes and shapes, a little bit too sloppy and messy in certain parts, but it wasn't planned. You know, we're just doing a little bit of chaos and seeing what comes out of our brains. Uh, which is fun. You know, we're doing the cloud gazy type approach to painting. Uh, and then we have, uh, oh, Flamore. Flamore also looks quite regal with the little gemstone. I uh, kind of wish I had expanded his body, you know. I guess I ran out of time on the stream. No idea what night nitinol is? Okay, that's hopefully that's nothing. I don't know. I literally have no idea what that is. Um, something from chat. Uh, but here's some little robot guys, you know, fun with uh, little designs. This looks like a boat that fishes. It's a fishing boat, a mechanical, fi uh, just an automated fishing boat. He's got a little fishing hat on him. This guy lost his arms in a, you know, a freak cyberpunk mechanical accident. But don't worry, they're growing back. You can see them in here. They're they're coming back. You know, he's he's got arms. They're just not quite, you know, where they should be right now. But he's, you know, he's he's recuperating. Um, he obviously drew so hard that his arms fell off and, you know, he's waiting for them to come back to him. Uh, I don't know who this good looking guy over here is, but, you know, damn, that's a good looking guy for real. But we got more nonsense, you know, what could it be? Who knows? You know, is it the core of something? Is it the entirety of something? I don't know. I don't really plan things out that way. I just want to see the shapes come together and find out what happens next. This one, I feel like I was trying to harness some memories of like Mr. Jack and everything he used to do at Blizzard and whatnot, um, but I don't think I quite nailed it. It feels a little disjointed. Obviously it's not a finished idea or anything, just kind of like a, a touch of an idea kind of coming in here. And this was just a study of a Gunpla model, something I've done a couple times in the past. I changed it up a little bit. This doesn't quite look how it did. There's a lot of new details and shapes that I added, um, but the core base was inspired by a Gunpla model that I saw a picture of, and then I just wanted to do a study of it and then build upon it. Um, that's why it says study. So there's that. Uh, this guy's having a great time, you know? That's, that's really, well, that's what I look like when I'm in the Gunpla store looking for new models to buy. And then we have this guy, you know, just your average, you know, British citizen, a nice footy enjoyer, having a good time. This is actual stuff from, I think, the mech course I taught. Uh, so occasionally in here, there will just be scraps that are actual scraps from the class. More stuff. There seems to be a lot of weird cynics failed clones going on in all of these pages. Your toast is burning. Um, which, yeah, why not, you know? Ooh, this guy's good. He's like, a, I, I imagine him as being like a retired old military dude that's now like getting into cat ownership, but he's doing it in the most thorough engineering way possible, reading a little pamphlet on responsible cat ownership. I love him, he's great. He's my original character, don't steal. <laughs> you know, definitely some stuff going on in here. Hey, look at this. This was definitely uh, inspired by AI art. Who says that AI art doesn't have anything to offer? Um, there's some, you can get all kinds of inspiration from AI stuff, such as this 
lovely character here over here. And who's this charming fellow back here? Uh, I believe this was my little cartoon rendition of Sykra before he was publicly streaming again. So I was like, hey guys, you'll never believe how cool Sykra looks now. And everyone was like, what do you mean? I'm like, here, I'll draw a representation. He's got like cool giant hair and like a giant beard and he's like awesome looking. Um, so that was that. And I believe this guy was actually just a quick sketch, but then someone had, you know, submitted a painting for a paint over and I just threw it into his clothing or into a silhouette and then was like, hey, look, I took your painting and now it's my design because I just used it in the interior of my character. It was an actual environment, uh, but I repurposed it. I stole it. I AI'd it. <laughs> Now it's mine. Yeah, so good times, a lot of stuff like that. More fun faces, talking about perspective, trying to make sure you're showing silhouette read when you do perspective stuff. Um, here's, you know, my favorite uh, Overwatch character, Stonk Rat. Uh, he's a good one. I'm not even reading this left side, uh, but I believe this was, uh, yeah, this is Viper. I can tell even just from looking at him. This is my little caricature of Viper A. A, I guess you would say a community regular. Uh, Viper has been a part of our kind of Discord community and Twitch community and YouTube community for a long time. Um, so this was him as like a, I don't know, a cartoon villain perhaps, or maybe a hero. Uh, my queen, they're coming. I kind of like this, uh, this dainty kind of very old looking insect queen with their little hands writing a note. Um, some fun little mech stuff, some fun little, you know, faces going around. Yeah, not to toot my own horn, but I'm liking it. I'm enjoying it. Here's a bunch of faces. People said I couldn't draw decent looking males, so I had to prove them wrong. Okay, maybe not on some of them, but I got a little bit. Someone will find, you know, some of these kind of feel like uh, people that girls would enjoy looking at. I don't know. Um, but yeah, maybe, maybe this guy's a little decrepit, but he's got the cool hair, you know, they, they all got the cool hair. Uh, more just snippets from the class, you know, more mech class stuff. There is no mech class this year, so, uh, you know, you'll have to wait until next year if you want to take the mech class. I'm rotating in new ones. So I'm doing a hand mastery class that should be a lot of fun, just drawing hands with people nonstop for like, uh, five or six weeks. Uh, who doesn't want to do that? Uh, more faces, of course. Stylized faces, just endlessly. And I like some of these shapes, you know? Some of them are quite nice. Get some nice uh, flow between all of the features, some nice continuation of the head shapes into the neck and the surrounding forms. All the stuff I love. And here's a uh, environment, I guess. I can't begin to remember uh, the lore behind some of these elements, but you know, once again, Twitch, Twitch type stuff just winds up being weird, but you know, there you go. I think this was during the second or third week of the MET class where it's really focused on understanding the types of joints. Here's some more, once again, just like, it's fun to just build them like outward exponentially, just take a random one and be like, well, I'll attach something to there, attach something to there. Just keep attaching stuff and keep just building it outward and letting it be a fun little industrial design experiment. Uh, so that's fun. Here's another one, same exact principle, you know, just keep expanding. It helps you practice perspective too. It's a little more fun than just drawing boxes. Um, so that's good. More, I guess, just lots of them. Uh, I think these were all probably done in the same day, actually. Um, and yeah, this is good. This guy gets it. I love doing art. That's me. I love doing art. Art is great. Um, who doesn't love doing art? It's it's a lot of fun, you know? This whole thing, this whole uh, presentation of all of these art pieces, were all made with a fun, kind of lighthearted, non-serious approach. And, you know, it's great. It's great to approach art like that. You discover new things, you make new observations, um, and you learn to let go of your fears of failures and whatnot. You just have fun with it. Um, here's some cats. Uh, I believe these are cats from the Discord. I'm sorry I don't remember uh, whose cats they are, but uh, if you're one of these three cat owners, uh, congrats, you're in the video, hurrah. 
we're really in the core of the mech class at this time so just just tons of fun industrial stuff and i like to look back through these because honestly as as weird and stupid as it sounds uh when you're just kind of mindlessly drawing stuff they sometimes don't seem that interesting at the time but then you go back and you look at them like you know months later or even a year later like i'm doing now and i see all these things that i'm like this would be fun this could be a good you know thing to expand on like i should go back and do this like and make it finished um but i won't because you know whatever i just like to think about that i, I hate to say it but here's more british people <laughs> here's more british faces um i don't remember why this is in here i think it was a reference to a paint over of that we were working on uh that someone submitted i don't i really don't remember things Oh, okay. So yeah, once again, more mech stuff. Now is the part like instead of I'm giving you a little little behind the scenes peek at uh, what the mech class is kind of like cuz uh yeah, we go through times about, you know, perspective, turning stuff in space. We go through times where we're dealing with like different types of uh joints and hinges. Uh and then we talk about, you know, just cores, like making interesting cores to then like add the stuff onto. Um, and, uh, here's, uh, you know, a broccoli organ of some sort, <laughs> exploring stuff. Uh, a little bit of, uh, Mac Crunch studies, something I also like to do. I'll be 100% honest with you guys, I think this one kind of sucks. Uh, I think it's too, uh, safe and literal with the colors. I think it's too safe with the perspective. You can see the perspective is, is like fighting itself to be more boring. And this one was definitely more fish-eyed, so uh, that's lame. More cats? Sassy. Um, lazy. Representing the two uh, types of cats. Sassy and lazy. Uh, that's fun. Good times. Uh, and here's everyone's favorite Pokemon, Alolan Charnold. Um, I, I have no idea what this is. Um, but I mean, it's self-explanatory. It's a Lolan Charnold. Everyone, you know, catch him fast. Uh, more core blocks. Ooh, fun ones. I really like playing with the big, medium, small, like functional kind of big shapes. And then just adding some little connective parts where you can like slap other stuff on there. Ooh, there's more of them. Yeah, I love this stuff. Um, that's fun. And then we have... A Giraffosaurus Rex. I think this was a special day in Twitch chat because I decided to take everyone to Giraffic Park, everyone. Welcome to Giraffic Park. Just all of the giraffe dinosaurs you can possibly hope to see. We got the Dilpharaf. We got the Stegoraf. We got the Giraffodactyl. Ooh, that's a good one. Um, even a Plaphiosaur. Is that a giraffe name? Sure, why not? Um, so everyone's giraffing it up, uh, at least for one day. So that was a fun time, you know? Who doesn't love a good exploration, a deep dive into variations of the same animal? Try it out. Uh, let's see, we got Gloopy Flarnsworth, uh, you know, a very famous used book salesman, Gloopy Flarnsworth. <laughs> I have no idea, honestly. Uh, then we got uh, more mech stuff, of course. Uh, I'm slightly, a somewhat closer to finished looking drawing here. A little bit still unrefined, but I could say that's almost like a, a design. Uh, and then we got the more thumbnails. I, I was going on a, a lot of tangents this year talking about how doing thumbnails and getting good at character thumbnails is very similar to getting good at writing cursive. Uh, where it's a lot of just repetitions of movements and letting the subtleties of them and the changes that just naturally happen in your hand, uh, trying to play them up and let them actually dictate the design that you go with. Um, and there we have some lovely beef crumble. Who doesn't like a nice plate of beef crumble? Whatever that is. A cool monkey king looking guy. A little, little bit of Wukong action happening. Oh, that was fun. It's a good time on that. I think that was just a paint exploration type thing. And then, of course, we get into the time period of the hip. Uh, this was around the time where I was doing my hip video, so I needed to practice a bunch of hips. Uh, so this is one of the pages of me just practicing hips to try to decide what feels important, what's interesting. 
Um, and some of them, you know, talking about like pelvic tilt and stuff was a big thing I wanted to focus on and, you know, different things of that sort. I guess I took a break from that to just imagine myself, but like another three years in the future, maybe four years in the future. Um, but yeah, there we go. It's a uh, older, slightly older cynics again. <laughs> then we have uh, the actual stuff from the hips video. Um, now, I will say, like, this one is very awkward, and a lot of people, like, just were angry at the video in the comments because they were like, uh, this anatomy sucks. How can you call this an anatomy video? Especially this one. I knew this one was very exaggerated, and I still decided to go with it anyway. Um, and it's really just a matter of, like, there are certain movements that I wanted to just become very hyper aware of and conscious of, so I really exaggerated them probably to the point of just being a mess, uh, to be fair, you know, like the really extended uh, outward movement into the thigh that comes from the groin, um, you know, that's never going to be this extreme, uh, you know, of a gap in everything. But uh, nonetheless, you know, it's helping me. And I find that a lot of times when you're trying to learn something, it's kind of valuable to just go as far overboard as you can with the things you feel like you might be overlooking uh, beforehand. I don't think the drawings here necessarily like detract from any of the information in the video because uh, it was all very like, you know, thoughtful in the actual information leading up to this. Uh, but I just wanted to try different stylizations. And sometimes they go good, and sometimes people hate them, and that's fine, and, you know, it's, it's whatever. People also don't like how airbrushy I made everything. They miss the old cynics, the uh, rough brush cynics, the messy thick and thin pen, um, which I honestly don't miss that much. Um, but I do like it at times, so I try to implement it, and I'll, I'm sure it'll come back around. It, it's, you know, it comes in cycles, everyone. It's an interesting thing to reapproach in old style, but with new knowledge. Anyway, some little drawings here, some quick little doodles. Um, and this was, I believe, the final thing I demoed and made for my mech class. Uh, Timberly, the chainsaw mech. I feel like sometimes, you know, there are parts that I feel like are not as good as, you know, some of the designs that I just already saw in terms of line art and whatnot. Um, but, you know, it's good to just, like, carry one all the way through and make it a finished thing and decide on all the details uh, just for the sake of practice. Um, but it's like every time you do that, you, you wind up in that moment of, like, well, it's it's okay, but I kind of, now that I've done it this far, I kind of wish I would have taken a different idea and expanded that one to this level. Um, I think his balance could be just a little bit better. Um, and I think some of the elements are, you know, not as good as they could be. But nonetheless, I do think it's fun. I think it's kind of enjoyable in some regard. Uh, here are some of the sketches for him, um, which once again, you know, they could have been solid, but I, I like the big legs. I like the chainsaw arms. Uh, we're back to just regular Twitch stream nonsense. Good, good stuff here. I kind of like that face. Uh, not too much to focus on here. More animals with weird faces. Uh, I like to turn noses into creatures. I don't know why. Um, this guy has, he's flexing on us. He's like a giant eel. I don't know. Weird explorations once again. Just stylistic explorations, flow shape explorations. I kind of like the the chunkiness of some of these uh, little shapes going on in this painting over here. Just anytime I see a nice little trapezoid, little rhomboid kind of looking shape, uh, it always makes me happy. Uh, so that's good. Uh, this was braid practice day. I guess it was international braid day because this is all just me trying to both uh, relearn how to do braids and try to make them very logical and try to have fun with different styles of braids. Because why not? And here's a cake farting. Because, yeah, that's a thing. I, I think people were still asking questions about the hip video because this is after the hip video came out. But you'll get people that are, you know, asking questions in Twitch chat about different ideas in the video. So uh, there's still some remnants of hips going on. 
some other interesting faces once again comfort zone stuff <laughs> my infinite comfort zone <laughs> And uh, oh, there's some braids, some weird perspective faces, and yeah, a little bit of everything going on there. This guy's pretty decent looking, you know, just trying to make the best face you can out of a very kind of flattened, simple shape. Uh, you know, not any movements along the front edge, but nonetheless, uh, I think he worked out pretty well, you know? I, I think that's it's a decent, decent little face design, a little drawing. Uh, that's good. A little skull guy in the background. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. It's a good page. This is the point where the next brainstorm clash started up, which was the post-realism class, which is, uh, you know, if you don't know what post-realism is, it basically means accentuation of all of the overlooked aspects of real things. One thing we do in the class is we'd like to practice by painting food. I think this scale is, I'm not that happy with this one, I'll be honest. Aside from this uh, kind of leafiness over here, I like this. I like the cool tones and the warm tones and the shapes of this, I kind of like. Uh, the other parts are kind of a little bit messy. Uh, this corn is way too big for some reason. The scale is all wrong. Um, I think the corn is probably the biggest offender. Why is it so big? It's really annoying. I think this was a paint over. Ignore this guy. Something, something. Uh, this was definitely feedback from the class, uh, which I guess I put in here just to have like a little sample of some stuff that's I think important for everyone to remember. So when doing things like studies and trying to, you know, really capture what it is about stuff, uh, it is always important to focus on like the, you know, the quick, like very clear read of the different shapes. So, you know, like taking this very strong outer simplified shape to this, it's way more simplified than the reference. Um, but even like taking the complexity of all the speculars and really like kind of narrowing it down to just be like, oh, this is what they're doing just on a very like clear minimalist level. Uh, I think trying to approach things with minimalist observations, or I guess just, you know, once again, doing more with less. Uh, so that's a little bit of that. Uh, this is another, I guess this was talking about composition because uh, people must have asked in chat. Uh, sometimes it's nice to take a map crunch, just a random geo uh, or Google Street View image and just basically see what the composition might look like and how you might be able to improve it if you were gonna use it. Um, so I think I was mentioning like, yes, this is a good focal point back here, this little turn. It's the brightest, most high contrast spot. Uh, but in order to have a good uh, composition, you need to kind of balance it out a little bit. So uh, this window up here could become a nice secondary thing, but it needs to have more contrast behind it in order to stand out. So. That's where like some of these other trees came in and I was also talking about, or you could have a focal point of like a little bit of light catching on a character down here, something like that. Um, you know, making the side a little bit more vignetted with some trees as well. Uh, all composition stuff. By the way, if you didn't watch the composition video last year, I think it's one of my better videos. So uh, be sure to check it out at some point. Um, anyway, some creature design stuff. <laughs> Uh, these are fun. I think I was just obsessing over this like technique of just doing like feathery stuff with just like making a big shape and then just kind of having that very, I don't know, broom-like uh, structure. I don't even know how to describe it. Uh, here's Boo Tree, not to be confused with Sue Lee. Uh, I'm a mostly dance. <laughs> it's a good character. Uh, it's more food stuff. I think these speculars could have been a lot better. Uh, it's fun to just focus on negative shapes to define things like noodles and pasta, but uh, yeah, it's okay. Um, this, I don't know. <laughs> Must still be someone asking about why the hips were so bad in the video, and I guess I was determined to just make them even dumber. Um, but yeah, uh, some little thumbnail explorations, a little bit of nonsense. Um, some face caricature type studies. Uh, I think these were all based on photos, but I was trying to stylize and caricaturize them a little bit. I don't think this one's very well stylized. You can still see the reference and it's, I don't even think it's a good, uh, I don't even think I like got the likeness right, honestly. So that one's not as good, but the other ones are pretty amusing. 
Um, this was, okay, yeah, this is definitely part of the uh, post-realism class. This was just a quick paint over on how to stylize speculars a little bit more. Uh, this was the original on the left, and then I was just showing some ways you can make the speculars feel a little bit more uh, just kind of engaging on the right. Um, and same thing for the bottom one. I think I was just demonstrating how a little bit, just some touches of ambient occlusion, you can see them. That's the only change that happened. Uh, some touches of ambient occlusion can go such a long way in making something look uh, more solid, more definite, um, just nicer overall. Um, so just a couple little tips for you all. Um, here's some clouds. I love I love cloud paintings. I think this one, this one feels very kind of uh, Loish inspired in terms of technique. I really like the way Loish does clouds and I try to implement aspects of it into how I do clouds because I think it kind of uh, meshes well with the, my own view on how to render clouds. So uh, clouds are a lot of fun. It's also something we do in our post realism class. Uh, it's random faces going on here. It's okay. Uh, ooh, yeah, more clouds. Yeah, this must have been cloud time for me. Uh, once I start painting clouds, it's hard to get me to stop. So this is a nice one. I like it for its, you know, obviously bold uh, color temperature contrast, like this little slice of warm against an overall cool composition. I think it's a lot of fun. Uh, some more. This one's also got that same aspect of trying to balance out warm and cool. Um, and I think that makes making clouds so much fun. Why is this in here? I guess this is the type of stupid thing that I also just doodle in my uh, digital kind of sketchbook pages. I think I was on a little robotics, like just, I was trying to imagine if I was an engineer and I had to design like uh, some kind of new mechanical muscle fiber, like what would that be like? What would my process be for figuring that out? What kind of things would I try and experiment with? Um, so, you know, if you're a dork, you can look at those and tell me how dumb or wrong they are. But anyway, a little bit more just chaos on this page. I know that this specifically was me trying to highlight how fun it is to approach clothing folds in a more Lion Decker style. Because uh, I love Lion Decker clothing folds. And I'm, I think someone was asking about designing clothing folds and I was like, just go full on Lion Decker. Just embrace the Lion Decker, even throw in the little uh, open hatching uh, that Lion Decker does and just make it a hard surface. And it's so much fun. Uh, so that's a good time there. More clouds, talking about how to make clouds that look like this um, by using a really uh, broad and giant brush and just getting those quick little uh, gradations right on the edge, very fast gradations. It's good to be able to control your gradations from either slow gradations to very quick gradations. Um, yeah, some stylized trees, another part of our post-realism class, how to stylize tree type stuff. Uh, very fun exercises to do with that. Love the palm trees and, you know, trying to stylize them. It's always a good time. What else we got? I think this was just for fun practice, but some interesting uh, shapes and movements going on. Some some kind of nice little warm versus cool dynamics happening. Uh, some interesting little sketches. I don't know what you would call this guy, but there's certainly some creature designs going on on this page. This guy's like an elephant mosquito or something. Um, it's nice. Um, and of course, post-realism also deals with like some stuff about skin tones and figures. Uh, we use, you know, we try to use that as a good chance to really focus on understanding primary reads and secondary reads uh, and the importance of, you know, just subtlety and gradation. Um, so we're talking about even just, you know, subtle, the hand doesn't even have to be like, well painted. This was just like, you know, quick brush strokes, very little effort, uh, but it looks nice because the colors, you know, kind of have gradations and fun stuff. I like that kind of feel for a hand. Same thing for the, you know, just skin tones in general, you know, knowing where you can push them into darker, deeper tones and knowing where to relax. Um, I think this was probably just a self-portrait over there. Uh, or something like that. More faces. This guy's got his third eye open. You got, you'll have to see it. <laughs> um, yeah, those are good. 
uh, this weird guy. I really don't know what this was trying to become, but nonetheless, uh, creature design is a good chance to practice some um, understandings of subtlety and contrast and really controlling gradation and edge work. I like to do these quick just blobs of silhouettes of characters and then try to fill them in with information and be selective about losing information in the shadows or the light, whichever one you like. And this is, once again, just more more snippets, free education for you all, uh, free education from the class. Um, so this is talking about the importance of really focusing on like simple pooling of shapes. Uh, so try to really avoid thin lines and see how much you can pool together. You can have things that are almost lines, you know, these are getting close to lines. This is probably a line in some regard. Um, but really trying to minimize the amount of them and really just focus on the overall uh, bigger shapes. Very standard stuff that I talk about in my intermediate painting video, to be honest. As long as the primary read was good uh, and you keep it intact in the secondary read, then you can make everything look pretty nice pretty easily without too much stress or effort. Anyway, more, <laughs> more faces. I like these. I like that I'm using a lot of like little touches of like soft tone, just a little dab of the brush to get some little tones going on in the faces. I think that's fun. Weird little house thing, don't know what it's for. Something. Weird little start of a creature that I must have ran out on time and didn't get to finish, but I feel like this one has potential. It can almost be like a weird insect. Maybe it needs like wings or something. It definitely needs something else. I feel like this could be an extension that happens on the other side as well. Uh, maybe this is like just, it doesn't even need a face. Maybe it's just kind of blind and it's just some kind of weird bug thing. Might might come back to that. Uh, more faces. Doing that a uh, little bit of fairly odd parents thing right there with the ear hanging so low under the skull. This was the, I believe, the last thing I made everyone do for my class. It was to take an existing older image that you had. In this case, I took this one, which was okay at the time. I made it for a YouTube video at Design Lab. You know, my technique at the time was very just chaotic and messy. Uh, so you can see the rocks are all just kind of like scattered brush strokes. Um, and the trees are all just a little a little bit too scattered. So there's an okay idea there, but the execution's a little wonky in my opinion, in my updated opinion. So I took that same thing and then voila, just painted right over it, made all of the rocks look so much nicer. Oh, I just love how the rocks look now. Obviously I changed the scale now, instead of being like a huge kind of chaotic little city, it's more like simplified, streamlined into a little village, but I just thought that worked better. Uh, with the implied scale of everything else, it felt a little awkward. Um, so, and it also let me, you know, demonstrate the main thing I was talking about, simplification. It's all just, you know, fun stuff. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with those changes overall. Now, now we are in a very exciting month, everyone. We are in the month of April. And in April, uh, we had a little event. I didn't run it. I was participating in something you might know called Kimo Dimeshi. Kimo Dimeshi is a Discord art event where you basically have to do a figure drawing every day of some sort, or else you just get booted from the server. So I did my best. Uh, I started, you know, with all my chaos, doing my little things. And I decided really early on, right during the first day, to just commit to the same character every day and see how much I can push them into different poses and different ideas. So this is my character, this weird Eggman looking guy with his little round, I don't know if they're glasses or eyes, and his giant mustache. That is my character and I love him and I committed to him and get ready to see all of his adventures because there's a lot of them. Uh, here we go. I decided to take some Street Fighter inspiration. You know, this is a little jolly version. Little uh, dead leaf throw in the rose. I think this is like trying to capture like a nice little kick. I'm still working out like how I want to play with his proportions and you'll notice that they change almost every day. 
so this one, it's just kind of all chunky, all from top to bottom. Um, but sometimes he gets thin little legs um, or sometimes thin arms. You know, it just goes all over the place. That is his superpower. That is his devil fruit. Um, so here he is though. He's a fun little guy doing a shoryuken, doing some stretching first. Really just seeing how I can push these poses from imagination, just coming up with a pose and trying to execute it using this uh, kind of semblance of a character. Uh, this is not him. This must have been just a little bonus thing I did. <laughs> I thought I was gonna see him on this page, but it's it's this other sad looking creature, but that's fine uh, Here we go back to the drawing. So more more little fighting stuff. You know, he's got his fighting poses um, It's good times. Ooh, now I gave him a sword. He, he can be a swordsman, too He's he's basically capable of everything. This is his rarest form. This is also his strongest a uh, swordsmanship form where he puts all of his weight into his legs and arms and removes all of the weight from his waist so he can slash uh, at lightning speed. <laughs> uh, and this was him with his uh, full-on avatar mode, you know? He controls all elements. You got the water, you got the earth, little rocks, you got the uh, wind with the leaves and the fire going on. Uh, full avatar mode. I think I was describing what it what are the components of an artist one part visual library one part fundamentals uh, And one part, you know what I would call the intangible part of uh, mental intuition Involvement because you kind of need this to interact these two together In fact, you need this to interact this one onto a paper because fundamentals will only take you so far if you can't access them uh, and bring them out onto the page. But anyway, another very loishish looking cloud. Loishish? That's hard to say. Loishish. Loishish looking cloud in the background. And some, I decided that uh, he's going to be like me and he likes, he loves skateboarding. So now he's a master skateboarder as well. I can't even tell you what is this? Is this a feeble grind? Is this a crooky grind? Is this a smith grind? <laughs> Oh, if only, if only I was smarter, but the sad part is, like, I can't do any of them, so I don't even know their names yet. Uh, then we got some ideas for what he could actually look like. I don't know if I like rendering out his face, because I like it being cartoony and abstract, but nonetheless, just for the sake of exploration, uh, maybe this is what his face actually looks like. Now he's just flexing again. He's doing his intimidating sword pose. Uh, he's, he's very casual. He feels like he's really developing into his own skin and really getting comfortable with himself as these days go on, you know? He's more likely to have like a nice kind of flow between all the different parts of his body. Um, and I think it's, yeah, it's interesting how it develops, like how you get more and more comfortable with a character just by drawing it in every single pose you can think of. So even trying to implement a little bit of perspective uh, he finally got a Chaos Emerald. <laughs> He's not Eggman, I promise. Uh, but yeah, just trying to do some perspective stuff, uh, which is fun. He's got his coffee. Um, and a little bit of painting practice to go along with it. Just some fun stuff, once again. Just practicing different techniques. Uh, demonstrating stuff for chat. And, oh, oh, now he's getting really actiony. I like these, you know, the little action lines. The little uh, power slide going on here. Nice little stylish push. And then air dashes, because of course he can air dash. Why wouldn't he be able to air dash? This one's definitely inspired by Biken. This one's definitely inspired by, I think, Captain Falcon or something. Now he's finally done it. He's gone and injured himself, which is also very relatable. I've never hit my face on the ground, luckily, but I have done this before. I have done this before. I've definitely landed full force on my arms, which is... Uh, dangerous for my artist well-being. And then, finally, once again, in his powerful uh, wrestling form, I guess we'll say, with his thin waist and a big upper and lower body, um, I like it. He train, he study. Not only is he strong, he is also smart. He has books. He stands on the books and gains their knowledge. You know, once again, fun with lighting, fun with understanding extra form in the shadows instead of in the light, I think is a lot of fun. Um, and you might want to try that. In a more realistic universe, he just gets Lake Lipo once a month. 
Um, and this, these people are waiting in line. I guess he cloned himself. There's a bunch of them. Oh, it's, it's all falling apart. All the lore I worked so hard at is just gone. But he's got nunchucks now, and that's what matters most. Because uh, who doesn't love drawing someone swinging nunchucks? He's practicing his kata. Here's him diving to get some of those little diving rings at the bottom of the pool. I've tried to think of every single thing I could probably think of to bring new poses into him. Um, and here's him just jamming on a guitar up here. This is this is his Tinder profile. Oh, it even says Tinder. <laughs> it's his Tinder profile. Yeah, who wouldn't date this guy? And now he's on his break, which may or may not be done on April 20th. Having a great time. Uh, but he's back to work now. No time to rest. Uh, I lied. He's not a One Piece character. He's a JoJo's character. So there he is. Zagorobu. Muda, muda, muda. Um, great. What a great character. You guys might have actually seen this one on YouTube Shorts because I actually demonstrated my creation of this one. Uh, but I decided to make him a jelly person. A person with a purple jelly. Translucent. A lot of fun to do this one. Just a very quick, fun one. It made a great YouTube short. So check that out if you haven't checked it out before. Anyway, he's got some guns here. Uh, this gun is unrelated. I think I just did a fun little gun design for just my own benefit. But nonetheless, he can have guns too. He's going through his dual wielding, cool guns akimbo phase. So that's fun. I like these poses, you know, very uh, stylish. Um, and it's doing some stretching, you know? I love that too, you know? Get a good stretch going. There's so many poses to try. Uh, I think this kind of look at him is also kind of fun. Really hyper fixated on like the weight on one side, flats on the other side, like that. If you wanna practice something else, you have to find a way to do it with the character because once Kimo Dimeshi is relentless. Uh, so, you know, in order to practice perspective for at least one day of the month, I had to just throw him into every box I made. So that's a fun exercise as well. And I think this was the final day that I was able to participate. So I just left this on the Kimo Dimeshi server and said goodbye, farewell to everyone. I wasn't able to finish the challenge because this was the day before I had to head to Mexico City uh, to do an art event there. And it was a great travel and it was really Nice, by the way. I love Mexico City. But anyway, that's it. No more. This guy is over. He's done. We'll never see him again. But coming back from Mexico City uh, the next month after April happens to be May. And you may be aware of my lore in that every single May, I do something I call anime. And this is, believe it or not, the eighth year of anime. Uh, the first year was when we made Corner Kick, that our own little anime about a uh, high school soccer team. Uh, but this time, obviously, we're 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 into our we're deep into our skateboarding nonsense. So for Anime Eight, we weren't going to do animation this time. Some years it's animation, but Anime Eight is all about a new series that I will call Skate Witches. Uh, so Skate Witches is just a world of witches and warlocks and, you know, all things associated with witches, except uh, they also like to skateboard. So skateboarding witches, I love it. You know, all the scooter kids are little gromlins um, and then they're like little goblin characters. It's fun. Uh, so you get to see how things develop, how a story, how an idea develops, doing it collaboratively with uh, my Twitch chat and whatnot. Um, so obviously, at first, I'm just trying to explore styles, you know, trying to borrow inspiration from like Yo Yo Shinori and try out different things. Obviously, you know, Little Witch Academia is like the most similar thing I could think of. So I'm like, oh, let me look up some Yo Yo Shinori. So there's that. There's this page, which I think more captured the direction I wanted to go with like characters like this. And I even drew the old uh, corner kick character right here. Uh, this is our old protagonist from the Corner Kick anime uh, coming back um, next to our new protagonist for the Skate Witches anime, uh, which is right down here, Lilith. She's got her uh, different friends and stuff. We were trying to develop a whole cast of characters because that's what's fun to do uh, when you got these stuff. So there's a lot of brainstorming going on. Uh, I had chat helping me think up names for all the different characters. We had Lilith, the main character, 
uh, her, her friend is more of a tech skater, Esme. Uh, we had Malith, Malifa, uh, Malifa, I think it's Malifa, Malifa, short for Maleficent. I think uh, more of a gothic uh, looking kind of long border or something. Uh, we had Orla, Orla's like the buff, strong power skater. Uh, and then we even had one, uh, I don't know what name we went with. Did we go with Sabi, like Sabrina? Sabi, a little throwback to Chromacore. Oh, the antagonists, Astrid and Gretch. Oh yeah. And don't forget Tony Warlock and Rondi, Rodney Merlin. Um, and here's Muska. He's a cat with a backpack. Um, Chad Muska, <laughs> the cat. <laughs> but yeah, that's how things develop. I even made a quick little pass at like a logo, Skate Witches, the K is skateboarding. <laughs> And yeah, I mean, it's little, little developments, you know, trying to still figure out the cast of characters, different costume ideas. Here's the final idea that we settled on for our main character, uh, even design their skateboard, their alternate outfits, whatnot, their color palette, uh, pretty fun. Um, and it was, you know, trying to do that for other characters, but kind of ran out of steam. Uh, so I didn't get to do them for all the other characters. Uh, some faces for out of nowhere, I think, this is actually because the stylized portrait class came up at the same time as anime. So that kind of threw a wrench into my anime because it's very difficult to go back and forth from trying to get good at drawing an anime style and then having to also get good at uh, teaching people portraits in a non-anime style. Uh, so you'll see a lot of those jumping in here. You'll see the little brainstorm snippets and like little notes from the class coming up a lot uh, in the coming uh, images and stuff. But here's our other cool character, Gretch, uh, fan favorite. Everyone loves Gretch, you know, so stylish. Uh, kind of a very shaved head with bangs and some sideburns. And of course we had to design our main male character, uh, Jason, Jason Warlock. At first he was gonna be called Warren Lockett, um, but we were deep on the Jason train at this time. So uh, if you know, you know, but since we're in anime land, you might as well incorporate some like Onis being like the counterpoint to the witch characters. Once again, more faces, uh, trying to mix in the stylized faces. Um, and then back to uh, our other male characters. We got Chris Warlini, we got Merlin, we got Tony Warlock and Jason. Uh, uh, skate witches, another little drawing of our main character doing a doing a sick jump off a ramp or something. I don't know. We I think we painted this one. Yeah, there we go. Uh, just a quick color pass. I didn't really render it, but just the quickest like base colors with a little bit of stuff going on. And then back to stylized portraiture, talking about little notes, talking about how to stylize things and focus on the flow of shapes and economies and stuff. Uh, but then back to Lilith. So we're just jumping back and forth, kind of a different approach, but uh, just wanted to try that. I think this was pretty inspired by people like uh, Toppiest Dylan and stuff on Instagram, Top Dylan. Uh, same thing for this. This is our other character, Wanna Fry. Uh, just practicing, just talking about, once again, the idea of, you know, blowing out your direct light and then showing information in your shadow areas. Um, and really letting that carry an image. Uh, but anyway, doing some expressions, some potential other characters. 900, nice. Um, yeah, just fun times all around. And I like talking about anime faces and trying to explore them. I don't know what this guy's doing, but yeah, it's fun to draw. Uh, this guy's pretty stylized. I believe, if I'm recounting correctly, I believe I was also watching through the anime monster at the time. So this guy feels very, like, inspired by one of the characters in Monster. But anyway, uh, more stuff for the stylized portrait class. I think during this week, I did actually get a chance to talk about stylization in terms of anime. Uh, so, you know, you can see some little snippets of that happening. And also talking about stylization in terms of color zones of the face and stuff like that. Uh, we're slowly running out of stuff from anime, but at least we got a couple more images. I believe I changed the name to Onihawk uh, instead of Tony. Oh, I don't know. There's so many different characters and name ideas. Um, but yeah, fun times. Going for a very Oni look. And uh, trying to draw some old people. Trying to stylize old people. 
Uh, this is a buff old guy, but you know, just different types of old people trying to get a cool stylization for them. It's a lot of fun to do. And I think this is almost the end. Is this the last day of anime? It might be. Um, so you get a little just, I didn't get to the really like nail everything, but I do at least have one little hint of what the uh, scooter gromlins look like. Because uh, they're meant to be way more chibi. So like all the little scooter kids, uh, they have like a very chibi appearance and they wear like hats that are kind of like witch hats, but they have like a helmet part to them. So they got like helmet witch hats and I thought that was fun. Um, they got like big, you know, little chomper teeth like goblins and with the big ears and whatnot. Um, and then we got more Onis once again. Anime season's over though. Um, that's That's all you get. Because now we're into June and everyone knows that there's only one way to start June and that is with a spoon. Uh, so Spoon June, a tradition that will never die. It's been going since 1692, Spoon June. Um, so make sure to paint a spoon on the first day of June to have good art luck for the rest of the year. Probably should have thrown a shadow under it to make it look more finished and polished, but whatever, it's good. You might remember this little guy also from a YouTube short. It pretty much summed up the approach, which was a purely design theory based approach. I had no idea. I thought I was making a just a random blob at first and then it started to turn into a character. So it became a weird character. And that's what art's all about. Anyway, this might actually be the end of the stylized portraiture class. So once again, just demonstrating more scraps of how to, you know, stylize the same face in different ways. Masculine, feminine, uh, anime, more of like a Mike Mignola style, more of a cartoony Western cartoon style, and even talking about ways to stylize the painting process, which is also a lot of fun. Uh, so good times there. And then just having fun and just making faces. Once you're coming off all this time doing anime and stylized portraiture, I feel like my faces were definitely feeling very confident, even if they're really weird in their shapes. Uh, they have a they have a nice confidence about them coming off of all of that stuff. So this guy totally reminds me of uh, one of the uh, you know one of the main characters from uh, Hajime no Ippo, the the boxing anime. It's a great anime. I love that anime. A quick little environment uh, kind of just exploration, I guess you could say, just trying stuff out. Just once again, no plan, more of a paint exploration, no uh, thumbnails, no ideas, just paint explorating my way into environments. I'm so loud on my clicking, I'm sorry. I'm like punching the mouse button. Some silly faces. Uh, maybe you'll find something in there that captures your interest. Once again, more styles, more confidence. Honestly, I think at this point, I was just trying to capture a more aesthetic way that I would just draw faces. Uh, going forward, you know, trying to bring a little bit of the anime stuff into my more realistic faces. Because I feel like that's what this is kind of capturing. It's kind of like a little bit stylized, a little bit realistic, trying to work on the balance, as always. I think I was just talking about how to do thumbnails. Um, but that's fun. Maybe there's something good in there. Uh, this is definitely a, a post addendum to the stylized portraiture class. All of my classes have luckily been great and I met so many awesome people and just had a great time. Uh, knock on wood, I guess. Here's a, a weird little exploration into something. It's got a little chicken, little hood. I don't know, chicken hood. Yeah, why not? Ooh, and interesting. I completely forgot I did this. Um, but I think someone in chat asked me to revisit my old tooth creatures. If you're, if you've been around a long time, you might be aware of my little tooth creatures from the uh, hit uh, comic I was planning out uh, called, uh, what was it called? Cavity Break? Cavity Crunch? <laughs> Cavity Break? I don't know. It was a thing where like these tooth, these like tribe of tooth creatures fight giant robots and stuff. Um, but anyway, faces. Surprised faces, angry faces, concerned faces. Uh, everyone looks concerned. I don't know why. Everyone seems vaguely worried. And then like a uh, like a giant wave washing away all of my energy comes Chromacore. And I'm gonna spoil it for you right now, everyone. I did not do any art at all during Chromacore. I was too busy running everything and organizing stuff and dealing with chaos that I didn't do 
one ounce of art. Every single stream I did was just reviewing all of the art from every day. It took a long time. There were so many entries this year. Obviously, if you watched the recap video, you know from Chromacore at the start of July, the next piece comes at the middle of September. <laughs> there is a full uh, July, August, September. It's not until the middle of September. There was a vacation thrown in here as well. I went to London, I went to Ireland, I went to Scotland. Um, I did a lot of exploring, I did a lot of things. And then I came back uh, and I you know, had to get back into making art. Uh, it happened to be my uh, good friend Sue's birthday, so as always, I like to draw a little silly little doodle of Sue, you know, in her two forms. These are the two stages of Sue <laughs> that I'm familiar with. And then, yeah, trying to get back into painting and doing stuff, but honestly, I was pretty just drained for the year. It's hard to get back into the swing of things when you get away from your routines for that long. So uh, there's not gonna be a whole bunch else left in this year. It's just little little minor scraps here and there. There were no more daily streams. There's a little bit of that. There was a little, an ounce of activity for Sword Timber. On the very last day of September, I tried to do as many as I could. Uh, just silhouettes, you know, Cosmic Blade, Holographic Sword, Asteroid Sword, Quantum Sword. Uh, the Barbie sword, the horror, the fairies, the everything. It's, it's all, it's the, as many as I could do in a short little stream. And of course, I made my uh, little video talking about meditation, just basically taking the talk from the uh, previous year at Lightbox and just expanding on it just a little bit. And I made some little art for that, which was fun. And then I decided to throw in a little glimpse of what I do in, not in my Brainstorm online classes, but in my LCAD classes, because I also teach at Laguna College of Art. And this term, this past term, uh, we had a fun little world, because every year we come up with a different, or every term rather, uh, we come up with a different world and we try to make art for it. So this uh, term, it was all about a planet that is completely covered in biomass of jungle. It's a, just a complete jungle planet from top to bottom. No, no real oceans, just jungle. And the people that live there, they actually sail upon the canopies of the jungle in boats as if it was the ocean. So it was very also very much a One Piece inspired kind of vibe, uh, except instead of an ocean, they sail along the canopies and they live on the canopies. And uh, there's two races on this planet and they get along. They're not like at war with each other. There's uh, this person has guns, but that's just for holding back the creatures and monsters that they run into. But there's two races. There's the people that evolved above the canopy, at the top of the canopy, the Lemurians. They're like people with tails and they kind of a little bit of monkey-like qualities. And then there's the plant-like people who had a name as well. Um, and you know, there, one of them is a member of this little crew of four and this little crew of four is an adventure crew. They go out on a boat, uh, and they go in search of adventure and et cetera, et cetera. A nice wholesome story, but that's Yap and Chowder. They're best friends. Uh, Marbles is an old lady that's in charge of security. She's an old, uh, Lemurian, uh, that has a bunch of guns and is just kind of crazy. And then there's Big Rig, who's like the other old guy who's the captain. He's the captain of the ship. He doesn't have clothes on here because I was just giving a demonstration for like what their proportions could be like. Um, but normally they have clothes, uh, like marbles down here. Um, but anyway, regardless, uh, that was a fun little thing to explore. There is one last piece of nonsense to wind down the year slowly, and that is the last class I taught of the year, which was my abstract design theory class. And if you've taken that class, you know, it's just a lot of abstract doodling, getting in touch with design theory, trying to embrace all the aspects of design theory. So sometimes you're implementing the design theory of like focus, sometimes it's something else. So there's lots of little sketches like that, you know, playing around with them, exploring shapes. Uh, and it's fun. It's meant to be meditative. It's meant to be relaxing. And it's meant to be, you know, just helping you get more trust with your intuition. So it's a little bit of that. Uh, oh, a little bit of, must, I must have actually streamed uh, for one day because there's a little bit of faces going on there. 
And this was coming up on Self-Portrait Day, which means we're getting close to the end already. Self-Portrait Day, I initially was thinking, maybe I'll just do something fun, maybe do something cartoony. So I was practicing a lot of little cartoony faces, trying to get a good sense of how I like to stylize the cartoony version of myself. Uh, but in the end, I decided to basically just do a regular kind of painting. So uh, that was the self-portrait this year. It's come. It was kind of coming in a drought of not doing much art. So uh, luckily it came out all right. It's always a little bit worrying when you're not doing much art to push yourself to do something finished. But, uh, you know, I've obviously finished. You know, I only spent like less than two hours. Uh, it was a very quick one. Uh, but nonetheless, fun, enjoyable, uh, good times going on there. I think it'll mostly be the abstract stuff from now on, maybe. Yeah, just little bits of chaos, little snippets of stuff. Discuss, discussing different principles. Oh, and here's a little bit of filigree, just for fun. I do like doing filigree. It's pretty fun and enjoyable. I, I think it's a art form that I would, honestly, I would love to get really good at. Um, so I'll probably try to find any excuse I can to, you know, incorporate it and try to get better at it. If you get good at it, it can add so much to your aesthetics, to your ability to present art, to your industrial design, to your clothing design, to everything, really. Just, yeah, we'll just keep the abstract train rolling. I kind of like these little kind of layered little uh, touches, almost like layered leaves of stuff happening. Uh, it's a fun way to go about things. One thing that I keep falling into when I'm not paying attention is I'll start making my abstract stuff very flat to us. So sometimes I have to remember to try to push it into and away from us in space. Um, but anyway, yeah, this was finally where we get to bring in a little bit of painting into our abstract stuff. And I really like painting abstract nonsense, you know? I kind of like this one, honestly. It has, once again, those little like shadows cast by little petals and leaves, whatever you want to call them. You know, I just think it's kind of fun to do. Um, here's some just weirder ones, kind of abstract to the extreme. Um, it's kind of nice, nice to look at. I think this is just two layered into each other. And uh, this one, I would say has some good qualities, but honestly, this one is not very aesthetically appealing for the sense that it's trying to do a little bit of everything. And I'll tell you why this was for a class demo. And obviously it started out pretty, you know, restrained and pretty reasonable looking. Uh, but then I was like, oh, if you want to think of more things to try, you can try stuff like having direct light, kind of weird light effects hitting random blobs and forms. Uh, so I threw that in there just to demonstrate. I threw in this, you know, secondary light to demonstrate that. But normally you wouldn't want to have all these things clashing with themselves. But uh, just for the sake of demoing, it's kind of fun. More chaos uh, once again. And uh, yeah, just I think I ran out of time because this is very, very quick and rushed. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, a little bit to wrap up this kind of head down memory lane. Anyway, trying to get into a few streams, but I still wasn't able to have enough time. Uh, but nonetheless, a little bit of streaming. Uh, some fun gun design stuff at the bottom. Once again, I love doing a little bit of filigree on my gun designs. Anyway. Um, looks like one uh, or two more little slides of faces just to wrap things up. Uh, is this the end? Might it be? Yes, it is. Practicing sunsets and clouds, I guess. Dang, we made it. You did it. Uh, maybe you did it. You know, maybe you had to watch this in like 10 different sittings because it's probably going to be very long, but... Uh, regardless, you know, it's fun to look back through all this stuff. Maybe there were some things that inspired you, uh, but regardless, you know, let's, let's just wrap things up for now. I'll, I'll come back on video. We'll see how tired I look now. Um, yeah, there we go. Uh, hopefully 2024 will have a lot of good stuff to offer. Hopefully I'll have a lot of good videos to make. I know I've been very slow on videos, but, uh, don't worry. There's still a lot of good videos left to be, um, you know, developed and put out to everyone. So just want to thank you all for supporting the channel, for watching this stuff, you know, whether you just casually look at it once in a while, whether you're a Twitch regular, whether you do Chroma Core or not, um, you know, it's just great to have a community of artists to, uh, you know, just communicate with and share stuff with. Um, so that being said, I'll wrap things up. Thank you so much for watching. And of course, a big, 
thank you to all the Patreon supporters still supporting this channel, even despite my, uh, you know, infrequent updates. But don't worry, uh, we'll see more Paint Over Pals coming up in the near future and more other things that you're familiar with as well. Anatomy quick tips, painting things, all the tutorials, uh, one can only hope we'll see a bunch of them in 2024. Uh, take care, everyone. See ya.